Hi everybody, it's Dr. Eric Balcavage and we're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. Today I want to talk about the link between inflammation and hypothyroid symptoms. Almost everybody who's got a hypothyroid condition, whether it's glandular, whether it's Hashimoto's, or whether it's cellular hypothyroidism, at the root is typically inflammatory condition. So I want to kind of tie all this stuff together, give you some insight on this. So stress, whether it's physical, chemical, and emotion or emotional, more than the body can manage or tolerate and it disrupts the balance in the body called this called homeostasis we start to see an upregulation of inflammatory chemicals and we get upregulation of inflammatory chemicals these inflammatory chemicals can actually suppress what's called the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis so what happens is you get decreased tsh production and when you have decreased tsh production you can get decreased thyroid hormones produced so a lot of people would say, well, if, wouldn't my doctor see that? Yeah, they may run a TSH, but TSH is actually gonna be low. And most doctors only address somebody with hypothyroid symptoms with thyroid support if their TSH is high. If TSH is normal or low, they're gonna tell you you don't have a thyroid problem. And you technically probably don't have a gland dysfunction. It's just being suppressed by the inflammation. If the doctors don't run T4 and T3, they wouldn't see if those values are, are normal or low, and they could be either, okay? Because along with this, when you have this inflammatory process going on, not only do we get decreased thyroid hormone produced, but we actually get decreased thyroid hormone transport into the cells, and I point this out right here. Inflammation decreases thyroid hormone transport from the blood into the cells. Thyroid, hypothyroid symptoms are a result of inactive or inappropriate or insufficient levels of thyroid hormone in the tissues. So blood values could be totally normal, but if it's not, if thyroid hormone's not getting into the cells and not binding to receptors and stimulating metabolism, you're gonna have hypothyroid symptoms. So inflammation can directly suppress thyroid hormone function and thyroid glandular function. It can also increase oxidative stress. And when you have increased oxidative stress, you have increased tissue damage. So we can look at markers like hydrogen peroxide and superoxide and hydroxyl radicals and perioxynitrate as oxidative stress markers. Oxidative stress, again, also suppresses this HP, HPT axis. It also increases the inflammatory state in the body, which is going to drive more inflammatory molecules to be produced and continue to have an effect and the inflammatory state is just going to downregulate the thyroid gland directly. So we've got this cascade of events and it becomes this kind of reinforcing cycle and the only way to really ad address this and fix it is not more thyroid hormone, it's actually addressing stress. We have to figure out what's creating stress in the body. But let me talk about a couple of other things. So in this piece, I talked about decreased HP axis, I talked about increased oxidative stress, when there's inflammation, we also get increased deiodinase 2 activity. That's the hormone that actually, or, and, or enzyme that converts T4 to T3 in the body. And that sounds good because T3 is the active form. So it's good, probably short run, but if you over convert T4 to T3, you're gonna quickly run out of T3, especially if it can't transport into the tissues. But here's another thing that most people don't know. One of these inflammatory chemicals is IL-6, interleukin-6. And the inflammatory chemicals will increase deiodinase 2 activity, leaving you with more T3, which is great, but IL-6 will inhibit T3 function. So it doesn't allow it to work. So yes, initially you'll convert the T4 that's in the cells into T3, but if it can't work, if it can't bind to receptors and actually work, then you're still gonna have hypothyroid symptoms. Inflammation increases D3 activity, and D3 activity is primarily in the peripheral tissues. The pituitary gland doesn't have D3. So D3 in the peripheral tissues increases T4 conversion to reverse T3 and converts T3 into T2. Now both of these are inactive forms. So during this inflammatory state, we're making more T4 to T3, but we're also making more T4 into reverse T3, which actually competes with T3 for binding sites. So if I'm making more reverse T3, 
I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to limit the amount of T3 that can actually bind to the receptors and stimulate your metabolism. Okay, So we've got a couple things that decrease. IL-6 will decrease T3 function. We'll get D3 that increases reverse T3. And then the reverse T3 competes with the T3 that is available to, for its ability to work and regulate metabolism. I talked about this before that inflammation decreases thyroid hormone transport into the tissue so the blood values can look normal, but because it can't get out of the blood and into the cells, you'll still have hypothyroid symptoms. Doctors don't really take that into account. Inflammation can increase cortisol, which can create belly fat, and it can also block thyroid hormone receptors. You can have inflammation can increase the conversion of tryptophan, a neuro, an amino acid that's used to make serotonin and melatonin that makes us feel good and helps us with our sleep cycles. And it converts it into neurotoxins. These neurotoxins damage the brain. They cause more inflammation in the brain, which reinforces this cycle. And it creates brain fog and fatigue and lack of thinking and focus and irritability and moodiness. We see decreased serotonin production. If I'm taking more of that tryptophan and making more neurotoxins, I have less available to make serotonin. And if you have less serotonin production, that can affect mood and temperament, but it can really impact motility in the bowel. You can have constipation as a result of decreased serotonin production. It, it increases the metabolism of serotonin, so it speeds up how quickly you get rid of serotonin. And so, under these stress and inflammatory conditions, there's an enzyme called MAOA, and the inflammatory chemicals, especially things like TNF-alpha and IL-6, will increase that MAO expression. So you'll deplete whatever little bit of serotonin you're making, you'll get rid of it really quickly. And when we do that, we go through this increased metabolism, it actually increases oxidative stress and increases hydrogen peroxide production. So now you've got more oxidative stress in the system, which continues to drive the cycle. You'll have decreased melatonin production and melatonin helps regulate our circadian rhythms and our sleep cycles. So you will have compromised sleep cycles. So these are just a few of the things that inflammation can do. Just I'm just really scratching the surface. So what can you do now knowing this? Well, if your TSH is normal or low, your T4, T3 values are normal by blood values, you have to look at some other markers. You definitely want your doctors to be running a full and complex thyroid panel. You also want to take a look at some other inflammatory chemicals that can be run on a regular panel. So you can look at CRP and homocysteine and ferritin and fibrinogen and uric acid and hemoglobin A1C, leptin, insulin. You can look at triglycerides and cytokines. Cytokines don't get run very often. They're expensive tests to run. But all the rest of these guys are found in tr at traditional labs and they can be done relatively inexpensively. The other thing you want to do is you want to evaluate your stressor, your life stressors and address them. If you, if you exercise excessively and don't allow for a lot of rest, you have to address that. If you don't exercise at all, it's probably time to start getting more physically active. You want to look at your chemical stressors. What are you eating? What are you drinking? Are you eating lots of gluten? Are you drinking lots of soda? Too much alcohol? Are you smoking too much? Uh, look at what you're eating, okay? Emotional stressors. What's going on in your life? Are your kids driving you crazy? Your spouse driving you crazy? Is work driving you crazy? Is, is, do you have emotional baggage that you're carrying around for the last 20, 30 years? Any emotional stress is constantly playing in the black background in your brain. You have to address and deal with it. Microbial stress, organisms. We've got about 100 trillion organisms in our gut. We've got organisms in our mouth. And the two biggest things that cause chronic stress in the body is in infections, chronic low-grade infections in the body. And they usually come from breakdown in the oral cavity or breakdown in the GI cavity, in the GI tract. So have, work with somebody to find out if you have microbial problems. Look at your habits. What do you do on a daily basis? Are they habits that promote health? Or are they habits that promote damage and inflammation? Look at sleep and breathing. If you don't breathe well during the day, you're a mouth breather, guaranteed you're a mouth breather at night. And if you're a mouth breather at night, you're getting decreased oxygen to your brain, you're gonna snore, you're gonna have sleep apnea, creates chronic stress and drives this cascade, okay? The last thing to do, find a functional medicine practitioner and get them to start working with you on improving your health, reducing your stress, reducing your inflammation, and then most of that can be done with diet and lifestyle 
and a bit of supplementation, it's not always about giving you more thyroid hormone. Matter of fact, in this cascade or this situation, more thyroid hormone probably won't help and may actually make you feel worse. All right, hopefully that helped. If you have any questions, by all means, put, put some commentary in the box below wherever you're watching this video, or you can call my office and, and ask for a consult or for some help. All right, this is Dr. Eric Balkavich. Look forward to another Thyroid Thursday next Thursday.